suppose we want to tune our controller and the frequency domain. However, there are situations in which we can't see an anti-resonance frequency and a resonance frequency in the Bode plot. For instance, when there is a stiff connection between the motor and the load, and then the standard loop shaping rules cannot be applied. In this video I present a frequency domain loop shaping technique for these so-called single mass systems, which I have called loop shaping for dummies. We start off with the definition of a lead filter, because that is the controller which we are going to use. And this is the transfer function of that lead filter, which says is H, the transfer function of the lead filter, equals 1 plus J times omega times tau 1 divided by 1 plus J times omega times tau 2. So we see a cutoff frequency over here in which uh, my Bode amplitude starts to rise, which is 1 over tau 1, and we see a frequency over here in which my uh, denominator starts to decrease, so my total Bode plot starts to go flat again, which is at omega is 1 over tau 2. So the Bode amplitude plot, which is drawn over here, has this kind of a behavior. At 1 over tau 1, my Bode plot starts to increase with 20 dB per decade, and at 1 over tau 2, it goes flat again. This is the phase characteristic, and this shows why this is a lead filter, because we have a phase lead over here. So at this point, we have a maximum phase over here. Now let's define the middle of this frequency range as the crossover frequency, which we are going to use in our design. So this is omega crossover. Then we can define this frequency, which is equal to 1 over tau 1, as omega crossover over 3, and we are going to define 1 over tau 2, so that's um, the pole of my system. We, call, we, um, we are going to define that as 3 times the crossover frequency omega uh, CO. What we also see is that the phase has a maximum value, and that maximum value exactly occurs at this frequency, the crossover frequency. Well, we can uh, calculate that, and we are doing that as follows. We are going to define um, the definition for the phase, and the phase is the argument of the function, so the phase is equal to the argument of the numerator minus the argument of the denominator, which is equal to Let's take um, the transfer function back again, so which is equal to the following, the arctangent of the numerator minus the arctangent of the denominator. So it's the arctangent of the imaginary part of the numerator, omega times tau 1, divided over 1, minus the arctangent of the imaginary part of the denominator, which is omega times tau 2, divided over 1. So we get the arctangent of omega times tau 1, minus the arctangent of omega times tau 2. Now we can fill in the values for tau 1 and tau 2, because this was 1 over tau 1, and this frequency was 1 over tau 2, so 1 over tau 1 equals um, omega crossover over 3, so tau 1 is 3 over omega crossover, and 1 over tau, uh, tau, sorry, 1 over tau 2 equals 3 times omega crossover, so tau 2 equals 1 over 3 times omega, omega uh, crossover. So let's fill tau 1 and tau 2, let's fill them in in this equation for the phase. And then we get the phase is the arctangent of omega times tau 1, which is 3 over omega crossover, minus the arctangent of omega times tau 2, and tau 2 was 1 over 3 times omega times, uh, sorry, 3 times omega crossover. So exactly at this intermediate frequency, omega is omega crossover, then we can fill that in for omega over here and over here, and we get phi, the phase, so the maximum phase, because it's this point, the maximum phase is the arctangent of omega crossover times 3 divided by omega crossover, so that's 3, minus the arctangent of omega crossover, times 1 over 3 times omega crossover, which is the arctangent of 1 over 3. So it's the maximum 
um, phase equals the arctangent of 3 minus the arctangent of 1 over 3. And when you cal calculate that, you see that that maximum phase is almost uh, 53 degrees, it's 53.1 degrees. And for design purposes, we say, well, that maximum phase is 55 degrees. So now we know what the maximum contribution is, the maximum phase contribution, the contribution due to that lead filter. What we also see is when we calculate um, the maximum, or the, when we calculate the amplitude at omega crossover, then we see that the amplitude is equal to the absolute value of the numerator of my transfer function divided by the uh, absolute value of the denominator of my transfer function, which is the square root of 1 plus omega times the 1 squared divided by the square root of 1 plus omega times tau 2 squared. Well, let's fill, uh, fill in omega, which is omega crossover, because we want to see what uh, the amplitude is at omega crossover, and we fill in tau 1 and tau 2. And then we get that the amplitude at this point, at omega crossover, is equal to the square root of 1 plus, and there we go, omega uh, crossover times 3 over omega crossover squared and um, divided by the square root of 1 plus omega crossover uh, times 1 over 3 times omega crossover squared. So um, let's work that out and then we get the following and then we get a very easy expression. We see that um, omega crossover divided by omega crossover equals 1, so this will be 1 plus 3 squared, which is 10. So this is the square root of 10 and the numerator. The denominator we get 1 plus omega crossover divided by omega crossover times 1 over 3 squared, so we get the square root of 10 over 9, which is altogether the square root of 9, which is 3. So Again, at omega crossover, which is exactly the middle between um, the zero and the pole of the filter, we have the maximum phase um, lead of that filter, which is almost 55 degrees, and we get an amplitude of exactly 3 at the point. And when you calculate that in dBs, you get 20 times the log of 3, which is 9.5 dB. So what does that bring us? Why do we calculate all these values? Well, a very good approach in designing a stable um, system is that you um, uh, use a phase margin of 45 degrees. So let's look to the open loop system, which we're going to use for designing a um, stable system. So our design rule is that we want to have a phase margin of 45 degrees, which is written over here. That means that in that case, the phase of my open loop system should be minus 180 plus the phase margin of 45 degrees, which equals minus 135 degrees. So I made a plot of a open loop system, which uh, in my example looks like this. So this is the amplitude plot, and this is my phase plot over here. And now suppose that we define the value and frequency, so the, the frequency at which the phase is minus 190 degrees as omega crossover. Because when we define this um, value in the frequency uh, where the phase is minus 190 degrees as omega crossover, and we use the definition of the lead filter, which I presented earlier, and then we see that at that omega crossover, we have a maximum phase lead due to the lead filter of 55 degrees. And in that case, we have a phase of minus 190 plus 55 degrees, which is equal to minus 135 degrees, which was my design rule for having a phase margin of 45 degrees. So what we are going to do is, we look to the phase plot of my open loop system, we see where the phase is minus 190 degrees, and that corresponding frequency, we call that omega crossover. 
and we call that omega crossover frequency the middle frequency between the zero and the pole of my lead filter so in that case my phase margin of 45 degrees has been realized um, what we then can do is we have to um, increase the gain of my proportional part of my uh, my P filter with my lead filter we can increase the proportional part in a way that this will become 0 dB but keep in mind that due to the lead filter we have an amplification of that lead filter um, an amplification of 3 or 9.5 dBs due to that lead filter so everything which is left then can be used for increasing the proportional part of my controller so again the approach is look to the open loop find out where is the phase minus 190 degrees call let's call that the crossover frequency which is the middle between the zero and the pole of my lead filter and use the rules for defining the lead filter and then you have a phase margin of minus 45 degrees and you can um, uh, increase the gain of your peak controller in a way that this point across over uh, amplitude will be 0 dB keeping in mind that 9.5 dB is due to the amplification at omega crossover of the lead filter so then you have a stable system what you should check then is whether the gain margin meets the requirements which is often used as at least 6 dB and check of course also if your sensitivity does not increase 6 dB or a factor of 2 because in that case you have a very um, yeah, high kind of, a, of an overshoot in your uh, sensitivity plot which could not be, be a very useful um, when you have for instance disturbances in that area and of course last but not least check your performance and when you check your performance um, check the performance of the total system also when feed forwards are applied so that's all thank you for watching and i hope you have uh, a lot of fun with uh, using this designer